Hey guys, my name is Bridget and today I'm going to be doing a bookshelf tour. So I organize my bookshelves based on what genre they fall into generally. Like I have all my vampire books up there, fading into contemporaries and sort of paranormal -y books. My dystopians fading into fantasy and then just sort of this row is sort of my favorite books and then the row below the fourth row and the final row is the books I haven't read yet but I sort of like this these are the ones that I sort of want to read more and then these are the ones that I have but I don't want to read as much and they're just sort of there so let's start with the top row These are all my vampire books. I'm sorry if my camera is a bit shaky. I can't have my tripod because it's all the way up here. So I'm just going to be doing this really quick. Twilight, New Moon, Eclipse, Breaking Dawn, all by Stephanie Meyer. Stefan's Diaries, The Vampire Diaries, The Awakening and The Struggle. The Vampire Diaries, The Fury and Dark Reunion. The Vampire Diaries, The Return, Volume 1, Nightfall. Vampire Diaries, The Return, Volume 3, Midnight. The, the Vampire Diaries, The Return, Volume 2, Shadow Souls. I just realized I had those backwards. I think it's because this one's hardcover and the other one is not. All by L.J. Smith. Some more vampire books. First, number two. First, number one, both by Christopher Pike. Awakened, Burned, Tempted, Hunted, and Untamed, all by PC Cast and Kristen Cast. The Morganville Vampires, Volume 1, holding the first two books, Glass Houses, and The Dead Girls Dance. Then we get to my sort of contemporaries, Bug, by Hannah Rappaport. Back in Time with Thomas Edison, by Dan Gutman. Playing Tyler, by T.L. Costa. To All the Boys I've Loved Before, by Jenny Han. The Fault in Our Stars, by John Green. Fangirl, by Rainbow Rowell. Rebel Bell by Rachel Hawkins. My Name is Memory by Anne Brashares. Afterworlds by Scott Westerfeld. The Unbound, The Archived, both by Victoria Schwab. Scarlet, Cinder, both by Marissa Meyer. And I have the two other books, but they are not here yet because I haven't read them yet, so they are on my unread sort of books list. Safik, In Carceron, both by Katherine Fisher. Maximum Ride, The Angel Experiment by James Patterson. The next shelf is my dystopian books leading into my fantasy books. The Hunger Games, Catching Fire, and Mockingjay, all by Suzanne Collins. The Giver by Lois Lowry. Insurgent, Divergent, Four, Allegiant here on the side, all by Veronica Roth. And then I have this box set containing Life Before Legend, which is just a few short stories for the Legend Trilogy. Legend, Prodigy, and Champion, all by Marie Lou. Then I have a Maze Runner box set, The Maze Runner, The Scorched Trials, and The Death Cure, all three by James Dashner. The False Prince, The Runaway King, and The Shadow Throne, all three by Jennifer A. Nielsen. Next is the Darkest Minds Trilogy with The Darkest Minds, Never Fade, In the Afterlight, all by Alexandra Bracken. Fifth Wave by Rick Yancey. The Infinite Sea, also by Rick Yancey. These Broken Stars by Amy Kaufman and Megan Spooner. The Assassin's Blade, The Throne of Glass Novellas by Sarah J. Maas, which is just out here because I really love this cover. I haven't read it yet, but I'm planning on reading it soon because I'm really looking forward to it and it looks really good and I've heard really good things. So hopefully that will be in my March TBR. I'm not sure. Look forward to that. It should be up in a few days. Throne of Glass, Crown of Midnight, all three of them were by Sarah J. Moss. Mistborn, The Final Empire by Brandon Sanderson, which is the first book in the Mistborn trilogy. The Clockwork Scarab and The Spirit Glass Charade, both in the Stoker and Holmes series and both by Colleen Gleason. Then I have Jacoby by William Ritter because those three books are all sort of my Sherlockish books. The Raven Boys and The Dream Thieves, both by Maggie Stevavitzer. Sorry if I said that wrong, I'm pretty sure I did. Part of the Raven Psycho Quartet. The Unbecoming of Mara Dyer, which I just recently bought and I'm looking forward to getting to hopefully soon. 
this receipt was really long and I liked using receipts as bookmarks so I'm probably going to cut it I don't know that sort of annoys me how long it is and the last book on the shelf is The Power of Six by Patasha Lord. This next shelf has all of my favorite series and favorite authors, mostly. There are a couple books that aren't my favorite authors or my favorite series, but they go with the genre. That's there. I had a sonic screwdriver on top because Percy talks about how he likes Doctor Who and I love Doctor Who too, but I don't have any Doctor Who books yet, so... I thought that would be a good place to put it. The first book on my shelf is Percy Jackson and the Olympians, The Lightning Thief, The Sea of Monsters, The Titan's Curse, The Battle of the Labyrinth, Percy Jackson and the Olympians, The Ultimate Guide, Percy Jackson and the Olympians, The Demigod Files, The Last Olympian, The Blood of Olympus, which I got a special edition of, which has gold, beautiful pages, and is signed by Rick Riordan. How weird though, it comes in this like case thing. I don't know if I like it. It doesn't match the rest of the books, which is the only bummer. The House of Hades, The Mark of Athena, The Son of Neptune, The Lost Hero, Percy Jackson's Greek Gods, The Red Pyramid, The Throne of Fire, The Serpent's Shadow, and all the books I have talked about on this shelf so far are all by Rick Riordan. I have all of his books, I think, that are out so far. I love him, if you cannot tell. <laughs> then I have The Goddess Test by Amy Carter. I unfortunately did not like really at all. I don't know if it was because I was expecting something different or I don't know, but I just really did not like it and yeah. The only reason it's on my favorite shelf is because the beginning of my favorite shelf has all of my mythology books and this deals with Greek myths. I don't know, maybe it's because I like Percy Jackson so much and it wasn't like that. I don't know. I just didn't really like this book, so I'm not going to be completing this series. But it is a mythology book, so that's why it's here. Then I have all of my Cassandra Clare books. Oh my gosh, look at how many there are. Clockwork Angel, Clockwork Prince, Clockwork Princess, which were all in the Infernal Devices trilogy. I have my Stile, or however you pronounce it from the movie from Hot Topic when they were selling this merch and I just had to have one and so it, I keep it with all of my Shadowhunter books. The Bane Chronicles which I just finished and I love. The Shadowhunters Codex by Cassandra Clare and Joshua Lewis which is beautiful and everyone thought I was bringing the Bible to school when I brought it to school to read. So whenever I bought it they would be like, oh Bridget you still reading the Bible? And I'd be like, yep reading the Bible, you know. Then I have the Mortal Instruments series, which is City of Bones, City of Ashes, City of Glass, City of Fallen Angels, and here I have The Gates by John Connolly. I didn't know really what to expect when I was going into this. I thought I would really enjoy it. I didn't like it as much as I thought I would, but it has a beautiful cover, so I will be keeping it here on my favorite shelf just because of how beautiful the cover is even if I didn't really enjoy the book. I know that sounds sort of strange, but it's beautiful and I put it there because I didn't have any room on my shelf because I didn't have my fourth shelf when I got it. And then I just sort of got used to it there because there is a little space there because I have paperbacks for the first four books for Cassandra Clare. So now I'm used to it and I really like it there. Then back to the Mortal Instruments series, I have City of Lost Souls and City of Heavenly Fire. All of those were by Cassandra Clare. The Iron Trial, which is the first book in the Magisterium series by Holly Black and Cassandra Clare. On top of the Harry Potter books, I have my wand that I got in Harry Potter World, and I got to Ollivander's, and he picked someone else, and I was sort of really sad, and then I, I don't know if he saw me or something, but then when we were walking out, he asked me a few questions, and then he told me what wand to get for me. And I was like, oh my gosh, I have to get the wand. So I got it, and here it is. It's beautiful, and I love keeping it in this box. And I would display it more like sideways or something, but it does not fit that way, so I like displaying it just on top here. From the Hogwarts Library, Quidditch Through the Ages. Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, and The Tales of Beetle the Bard, with additional notes by Professor Albus Dumbledore. 
Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince, and Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, all by J.K. Rowling. And the last book on my shelf is The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. This isn't necessarily one of my favorite books. One of my friends, he loves this book, but it's not one of my favorites, but it fits there, and I like it there, and I really like the cover, and I really enjoyed the story, so it's on the shelf. It fits in the spot. The last shelf I have, you can see that I do love Benedict Cumberbatch. Those are the books I am really looking forward to reading soon, and I'm hoping to get to the soonest other than the books that are already like up there on my shelf. I probably will get to them a bit faster. I don't know. I don't have a lot of unread books up on the other shelves because those are most of the ones that I want to read soon. I do have a few, so I'm not sure what I will be reading next. You will see that in my March TBR. And then those are the books that I am not necessarily going to read immediately, but I would like to complete sometime in the future or maybe challenges or something along those lines. These are more of books I got a long time ago and I just still have. Boys Are Dogs by Leslie Margolis. Tomorrow When the War Began by John Marsteens. Magic by Angie Sage. The Nine Lives of Chloe King by Liz Braswell, writing as Celia Thompson. Sword Quest a prequel to Sword Bird by Nancy Yi Fan, which is actually an arc that my parents got from their friend who owned a bookstore or something. And I've had it for a long time, 2008. So I've had this arc for about, about eight years. I haven't gotten to it yet, but hopefully I will soon, sometime, someday. The Never War, which is a book in the Pendragon series by DJ McHale, and I read this when I was a bit younger, and I enjoyed it while I was reading it. It was a bit long, but I liked it, and then I saw it on the discard shelf at my library, and I was like, why not pick that up? I've read it before, and I know I enjoyed it. Maybe I'll get back into it and actually finish the series, because I don't think I finished it last time I read it. The Legacy of Agma by E.A. Rappaport, which is a father of, the, of a friend of mine's. The Haunting of Derek Stone, Bay You Dogs, by Tony Abbott, which I got when I was in fourth grade when the author came to our school. And I thought it would be cool to have a signed copy. And I never read it. And now I have a lot more signed copies of authors that I actually really enjoy. I don't know that I don't enjoy him, but I haven't read it yet. So maybe I'll read it someday. It's short, so it should be a quick read. I don't even know what it's about. So I think it's the second book in the series. I don't know why I got it. I think I liked it because it said dogs in the name. Yeah, I was really, really into that. And here I have my TBR jar with all of my challenges for the 2015 year. And here are the ones that I have already completed that I kept next to it just because I thought that would be nice to know which ones I've already done and then see if I complete all of them. Hopefully I will. I'm aiming to. Here, my TBR jar, I have The Coral Island by R.M. Valentine. Another one of my relatives got me when I was in Australia and it looks really cool. It looks like a pirate sort of story and I'm really looking forward to it. I really want to read this book soon because I've just been putting it off and it looks really good. So hopefully I'll get to it soon. I feel like I'm saying that about all the books I haven't read. This book on this side of the shelf is The Chronicles of Narnia by C.S. Lewis, which is a bind up of all of the tales of Narnia. So there's like seven books in here. And I'll probably read this during one of the duo decathons to complete probably the read series challenge. We see these bookmarks I got from my grandma's house. And I got some other ones too that were really pretty. There was this butterfly one too, which was pretty. And these ones are really pretty. I haven't opened it yet because I haven't had a chance to use them because I like to use my receipts. But if I don't have one, then I will definitely be using one of these. And here is my Mad About Sherlock magazine with Benedict Cumberbatch's face on the cover. 
and oh my gosh, I love him, and I love the show Sherlock. So when this copy of the magazine came out, I just had to get it immediately. And this came out last year in January, so it was like a year ago. And I just can't wait for Sherlock to come back, even though it will only be with three episodes. Those three episodes will be worth it. It is an amazing show for anyone who hasn't watched it. You definitely should. The last part of my bookshelf, Fairest by Marissa Meyer, and it is an autographed copy that I saw in the airport, shockingly. Then I have Cress, also by Marissa Meyer. These two books I'm planning on putting up with the rest of the books in the series once I have read them, and I'm planning on reading them very soon, like in March, soon. Like, soon, soon. Not soon, you know, I'll get to them someday in the future. Yeah, this one is actually soon. I really want to read these because I've heard nothing but great things. And then I have Alan Turing, The Enigma by Andrew Hodges, which is the book that inspired The Imitation Game, which I went and I absolutely loved. Love this cover because I love the machine and bang the cover batch. I'm glad he I didn't get the one where he was facing the camera because I don't know, I don't really I didn't really like that copy. I mean, I love his face. He's beautiful, but I feel like this is more of a statement because it's not actually I know I'm probably going to cry during it and it just looks amazing if it inspires such an amazing film. The Whispers of the Fallen and Rebellion by J.D. Netto. The Chaos Walking trilogy, so I have The Knife of Never Letting Go, The Ask and the Answer, and Monsters of Men, all three by Patrick Ness. And I have heard amazing things about this series too, so I will hopefully get to it sometime in the near future. Really looking forward to it, it looks really good. And then the last book I have on my shelf is Endgame, The Calling by James Frey and Nils Johnson Shelton, which is a signed copy that I saw in Florida. I read the synopsis, and it sounded really cool. So I was like, hey, why not buy it? And so here it is on my bookshelf. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you have a great rest of the day. I hope you enjoyed this video. My shelves are a mess now, so let's spend a lot of time on that now. And I will see you in my next video, which will hopefully be up soon. Bye! Friends, look at all these books here. Look at all these books. Oh my gosh, I have to put them all back in on the shelves. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna have a great day. Look at all of them. There's just stacks. And I have to put them all back beautifully the way they were before. See how this goes. It'll probably. It'll look nice at the end. I'll see you guys later. Bye!